Welcome back to the 12 Days in March question of the day. Before proceeding, I will remind you that this is a pilot that I'm releasing now, but I hope to have a full library of questions available for the springtime as you all are preparing to take the Step 1 exam. I want to use this occasion to solicit any feedback from the viewing audience that would make this a most useful exercise for you. So you can respond to my work email at UMass Med, you can do it to the 12 Days in March email, or you can just post your comments on YouTube. Thank you, and I do look forward to getting this launch come springtime. Now on to today's question of the day. Here's a question. Take a moment to pause the recording. All right, are you ready? As you can see, this is another data-driven question. I encourage you to pay attention to the leading question, which of the following parameters are most likely to be increased. So we're looking for something that's going to increase in the presence of this flow volume curve. The question itself includes the usual array of demographics and tomfoolery. So how do we interpret the curve? This is a restrictive curve, right? We're going to look here at the residual volume and the patient's volume moved down, decreased, which is the language of restriction. Um, so in terms of which parameter increases in the setting of restriction, answer elastic recoil. And that is the key take home from this question, to be able to interpret a flow volume curve and understand the confusing language of compliance and elasticity that I'll get into as we proceed. Before moving ahead, I'm going to suggest to you that amiodarone was the cause of this restriction. I'll get into the particulars why I suggest amiodarone as the cause, but it's the only demographic feature in the vignette that would support restriction. And we'll take advantage of this when we go through the incorrect answer options. In terms of the curves, the NBME will use data to communicate about pulmonary disorders, and the interpretation of these curves are rendered simple. If you just focus on the residual volume, the patient's flow volume loop, move toward lower volumes, which made this a restrictive curve. And you compare and contrast that with the obstructive disorders where the residual volume increases, moving the curve to the left. That increase in residual volume is characteristic of obstructive disorders. So based upon interpretation of residual volume alone, we were able to classify this disorder. So in terms of the incorrect answer options, two of them relate to lung capacities. And it's best to interpret those by looking at uh, full pulmonary function testing. You can see here, a patient blows all the way out and then takes a very deep breath and resumes respiration. That area under the curve is referred to as vital capacity, residual volume, the air that was left behind at the end of full expiration, inspiration. With restriction, you can see that there's a decrease in vital capacity, residual volume, and total lung capacity. You need to be familiar with those parameters. Insofar as diffusing capacity, measure the ability of oxygen to get across the alveolar surface through the interstitium and into the pulmonary circulation. This alveolar interstitial capillary interface is measured by diffusing capacity. And coming back to the idea the patient was on amiodarone that caused uh, the restrictive disease, that would suggest the diffusing capacity by virtue of interstitial fibrosis would have been decreased in this patient. They were looking for something that was increased. So here is the key take home, is interpretation of the compliance curve. This has beguiled students for years. I understand it's a difficult concept. To me, the easiest way to think about the compliance curve is to think about distensibility, that is the ability to get air into the lungs. In a patient with COPD, with loss of elastin, it is easy to expand the lungs, that is increase volume under lower pressure. And that lower pressure is compared in contrast with restrictive disease. So in restriction, if you just think about increased elastin, increased collagen, to get any volume of air in, it has to take place under increased pressure. The terms to describe this are described by compliance, increased compliance with COPD, or decreased compliance with restriction. The other language of restriction includes elasticity, elastance, or in this case, increased elastic recoil. This concept of the compliance curve is not going away. You're going to see it again uh, when we get into cardiology. All right, coming back to the actual vignette and the tomfoolery they put in the history, right? tobacco abuse, 40-pack years, they're making you think about COPD. You needed to be able to interpret the curve, the picture with COPD, increased residual volume. 
The family history of lip and lung disease was to make you think about alpha-1 antitrypsin. So they were laying a trap in case you were unable to interpret their restrictive curve. And it was including the information about obstructed disease in the face of a restrictive curve that allowed me to conclude that amiodarone was the culprit here causing restrictive disease and probable lung fibrosis that ultimately accounted for the decreased diffusion capacity. And that's today's question of the day. The key take home, interpret the flow volume curve and understand the confusing language of compliance and elasticity. Thank you for joining us for today's question and have a furry day.